By the time you're watching this, Kenich is already been out for a good few days. But let's rewind back to two weeks ago when I was pulling for Muralani and one of the worst things that can happen to a Genshin player, well, happened. You! At first, I really wanted Muralani. But when I saw Kenich's trailers and that he could grapple hook let's just say i was sold the good news is is that with my new shiny c4 d luke i was now guaranteed kanich the bad news is i had basically zero pity and zero prima gems and i had seven days okay well you might be thinking well don't you have 21 days to get kanich but does that make for a good video besides let's make this an experiment see how much the new region actually brings in prima gems and if i can really get kanich on his launch day with nothing to my name. Firstly, I am starting off at exactly zero pity on a guarantee. I gained 1,442 Prima Gems and 4 Intertwined Fates, also known as 13 Wishes, from Falcon Moon, doing the Archon Quest, daily commissions, and opening a few teleport waypoints and statues of the seven. I already had Welcome when I decided to do this challenge, so I can't exactly turn it off at this point. But it only equates to 90 Prima Gems a day, which would equal around 630 Prima Gems in total for the seven days. The rest of my world is at 100% because I don't touch grass, so I can only focus on the new Natland exploration. Anyway, wish me luck and let's get started. So the first thing I did was do the Traces of Artistry event, where you could get Prima Gems from building up a full complantation, as well as from doing activities around the three main tribes of 5.0. So most of day one was taking photos of animals, fighting Wyobs. Seriously, Cleoverse, why do Wyobs exist? They always kick my butt and I hate them. And don't say skill issue, please. And testing out Kachina for the first time on this account by doing the mini game games in the Children's of Echoes tribe. Soon enough, I had unlocked everything in the Children of Echoes section of the Traces of Artistry event. All except one thing that I couldn't quite get my hands on and it was a cuckoo saw thing and that gave me a fair few prima gems after a while i finally got the last achievement by breaking the cuckoo saw's barrier with both Zincho and yelan i have literally no idea how to do this without yelan so uh rip everyone i guess then I got started on the science of the canopy by doing a bit of berry picking, photographing, I love the capybaras guys, they're so cute, and doing more agility chests with the Yumkasaurus as obviously Kadeech had not come out at this point. Damn, I wish I could have done this event with Kadeech, but you know what, I still got to test the Kachita out even more. My goodness, she's a free unit. Finally, I completed all I had to do with the canopy of Echoes. I unlocked a domain in Toyak Springs, which gave me five gems and wrote on some spirit rays, wore Saurian photo shoots, and did the epilogue of the event. All in all, this netted me about 1,000 Prima Gems. There are nuts a lot of Prima Gems. First two levels of the Dodoko's Boom Vastic Espitades event. And my reward was 140 Prima Gems. I also got 80 Prima Gems from doing my dailies and another intertwined fate from the star glitter. So on the first day, my total Prima Gem count is 2,632 gems, 5 fates, which equals to 21 wishes. It might be a bit higher than the amount I mentioned just because I did unlock some waypoints and do some chests on the way, which would be too much of a pain to count, so that's why the Prima Gem counts might not completely match. I began the day with my Welkin and daily commissions, which gave me 90 and 80 Prima Gems respectively, and claimed my rewards for the Bominan S Dodoko event, netting me 70 Prima Gems for fish blasting. Klee would be proud. So after getting started increasing my exploration process in the Tecumekin Valley, at the moment a measly 9%, by being KO'd by Wyops, 
again. However, why did you think this was a good idea? I wanted to use my exploration team, but I kind of had to get my overpowered Alakino to, well, finger quotes, unalive it. So after getting started increasing my exploration process, I played my cute little Saurian and did the Shadows of the Mountains and Peace to the Sunbring World quests, which gave me 50 and 40 Prima Gems respectively, adding up to 90 Prima Gems. Stopping for a cute photo opportunity to commemorate my luxurious chest, a tradition I've had for a couple of years now. Then I did a bunch more things, including the Weighty Wings World Quest, Exploration, and leveling Kachina so I could climb up walls easier. From that, I got quite a few achievements. <laughs> Day 3 was really a continuation of what I wanted to do in day 2. You aren't going to be shocked that I got 90 and 80 Prima Gems from my pay to win Vulcan and daily commissions. I did another level of fish blasting which gave me another 70 Prima Gems. Then I basically just explored and did more world quests which got me 40 Prima Gems for the quest and 5 for the achievement. I then moved from Tekamekan Valley to the Basin of Unnumbered Flames. At this point just to find more chests rather than spending time 100%ing. Because I had such a short amount of time, it would take a lot of effort to find the remaining 20% I hadn't got. And they were Prima Gems I could have got elsewhere. I finally had enough Pyroculus to level my Netland Statue of the Seven to the second level and got myself 100 Primos and a Shrine of Death's Key. So I quickly drove myself, if you get the pun with Kachina and her little cart to the Shrine of Depths in the Tekken Valley and got 80 Prima Gems and 10 more Pyro Sigils. So overall, halfway through the challenge, I had a total of 3,568 Prima Gems and 5 Fates, equaling up to a total of 27 Wishes, meaning that I had gained 2,126 Prima Gems through mainly exploration and collecting Oculus. And although the Welkin Moon did contribute some of the Prima Gems, it was by far mostly free to play gems. <laughs> A4 and 5 were unfortunately pretty empty as I was too busy touching grass to touch Genshin. But I did log on to claim my welcome, my daily commissions, do Kenichi's newly released web event, on which gave me 40 Prima Gems, the Dodoko Bomber event, which as usual upped my total for Kenichi by 70 Prima Gems. On day 5, I got more Primos for achievements and 20 gems for completing the Lights, Camera, Action world quest. I upgraded my Statue of the to level 3 and got another 100 primos because this statue is a promo jam dispenser. Seriously guys, you're sleeping on this thing. So three quarters of the way through the challenge, I had managed to up my total to 4,475 primo gems and 5 baits. So that was a grand total of 32 wishes. That was a big increase from the 13 wishes I started off with, but it was nowhere near enough on zero pity to be anywhere near getting a Kenich, unless I was really lucky. I felt like this challenge wasn't going to go anywhere, but then I realized I really was just focusing on 100%ing two areas, and I needed to move on to Toyak Springs. Maybe then that would be my trump card. <laughs> So day six rolled around very quickly, right? I mean in the video, yes, but even doing the challenge, it felt like only yesterday since I had started. I found another luxurious chest by helping a gang of graffiti-loving monitors, and Kachina's eyes really bugged the heck out when I was taking a photo. I think it's a bug, or does she just come like that? I also got five primos from the subsequent achievement. Okay, so I said I would do Toy X Springs, but I'm back at the stadium clearing an area I completely missed. Oopsie, it happens. But then I found our second luxurious chest of the day and Kachina was bucked out again. Poor kid. Then I got to clearing out some world quests at Toyak Springs, which got me 40 gems for the quest, 10 for the chest, and 5 for the achievement. Then I wandered around a bit and got another 10 prima gems for playing volleyball with some birds. Then I got started on another big world quest 
dreams plucked from fire and got another achievement for riding some spirit ways. Wow, some of these achievements are super easy, guys. And completing this world quest got me 45 purple gems, including the achievement. And after hunting down another several dozen Oculus, I upgraded my stature to 7 to level 4, which gave me another 100 prima gems. And the Shrine of Death's Key, which then I unlocked for 80 prima gems, and Kachina actually looked normal this time when I was taking a photo. Thank you, Kachina. I love you no matter what. Day 7 was here and the final hours of Mulani's banner approached. Now it was time to activate my final stand, Tona's Flame, which I hadn't actually upgraded yet. And so with 322 Pyro Sigils, I got to level 10 and got a whopping 500 Prima Gems and got another Shrine Key, 80 more Prima Gems. We currently have 5 hours and 21 minutes exactly before Kenichi's banner comes out. As you can see, we have made some progress. We have 6,558 Primo Gems, which is 40 pulls. And we have six intertwined fates. Currently, I haven't been able to 100% everything. I've got 76% of Tecumacan Valley. I've got 88% of the Basin of Unnumbered Flames. And I have 100% to Toyak Springs. I have not made any progress on Kotepec Mountain though. So that's probably what I'm going to be doing today. I'm probably going to be... I do have the world quest to do. But today I'm going to be focusing on getting as much Primo Gems as possible before Kanich's banner. Now we're going to get to Soft Pity, unfortunately. Although I do have some backup buds as well. Wish me luck and I'll check back in with you in five hours. In the final hours, I completed the last Saurian world quest and got another Luxurious test and 45 gems from the quest rewards. Then I got my statue of the seven to the max level in version 5.0 and got another 100 prima gems. Then as the final thing I did my spiral abyss knitting 700 prima gems because I couldn't be bothered to 36 star it in like an hour. Less than an hour to go till Mualani's banner ends. And we have made some uh, progress. Currently, there's not going to be much change, but my final last ditch effort is the owner's flame. I've just got four more levels, which is a uh, 200 primo gems. Sadly, no more key. I'll try and get a few more gems until Kanicha's banner shows up, and then I will check in with you again. It, it is over. Kanich is here. So, how much did my little experiment work? As may I remind you, I am on one pity. So, drum roll, please. We went from 1,442 Prima Gems and four intertwined fates to 8,011 Prima Gems and six fates. Converts into 50 wishes, meaning that overall we have 56 wishes. Was that enough to get to soft pity? Unfortunately not. But it does show how many gems you can get by exploring, especially when a new region releases. Although I did use a bit of Welkin, that only gave less than 700 gems. Maybe the majority of this was through chests. So if you haven't explored Tevat already and you're in need of Primo Gems, I would definitely recommend exploring. But I do have some gems left over from the Welcome Moon, obviously which doesn't really count towards R. This would have been definitely worse off if I was free to play and didn't have the Welcome or saved up Welcome Genesis Crystals. I would say if you are free to play and you want a character, start saving up a little bit early or you might be praying to the Gacha Gods. <laughs> He's here guys! I finally got Kanich. He came home less than 10 pulls after I stopped recording. I did a few other things I had missed, opened some more chests on Kotapek Mountain and did my daily commissions and the event that was on at the time. And I wasn't recording when I got Kanich because I wasn't sure he came home at like 75, so just on the cusp of soft pity. So yeah, I needed to explore a little bit more than I would have got Kanich. 
And look, my pool's already going back up in number after drinking them all for Kniech, so now I'm saving for the Pyro Akron. I am having so much fun with Kniech. Look at his grapple hook ability. It is literally so fun. I'm so glad to have him explore me for the rest of Natlan. Even though his best supports aren't out yet, he still does tons of damage, even with non-optimal teams. See, he just did 80k. Did you see that? Look at that nuke damage. You cannot tell me that Kniech doesn't do good damage. Comment below, did you get Kniech or are you saving for another character? Thanks for watching. Goodbye.